Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will continue with the study of finite dimensional representation of SLN plus 1 C. So, we already proved uh, the complete reducibility for uh, these representations. So, to understand the any given finite dimensional representation, we need to understand what are all the irreducible representations and their multiplicity inside the given representation. So, towards this, we need to classify all the finite dimensional irreducible representation of representations of SLN plus 1 C. So, for that purpose, uh, we have actually developed this uh, weight theory. So, we will continue with that and then uh, understand more about the weights of given finite dimensional representation. So, let us uh, start with uh, V being uh, finite dimensional uh, representation of G. So, finite dimensional G module. Okay. So, we already seen that the action of H is semi simple. So, this is the observation that we made the action of H on V is semi simple. So, in particularly we can talk about the weight space decomposition. So, we can write uh, V as direct sum of V mu, mu comes from H star where V mu is the simultaneous uh, eigen space. So, which is given by those vector in V such that when you act by, by H on that vectors, then you, you, you give that action by this mu of H for all H and H. Okay. So, we have uh, this decomposition. So, we also have the weights. So, the weights of V defined to be those mu in H star such that the weight space corresponding to that is non-zero. Note that uh, in the adjoint representation, the set of weights is invariant under the action of SLN plus 1. So, that we have observed. So, very similar to that, we can see that SLN, SN plus 1 indeed acts on this weights of V as well for any finite dimensional representation. So, this can be proved using SL2 theory. So, what is the climb? So, climb is S n plus 1 acts on weight of okay. So, it is not just the action. So, we have moreover. So, if we take some lambda from the weight of V. So, then the dimension of this weight space is same as the dimension of this sigma lambda for each sigma in S n plus 1. So, not only that S n plus 1 acts on weight of V, the multiplicity is invariant under this action. Okay, that is what the second statement says. So, let us prove this. So, for this uh, we need to actually invoke again uh, the SL2 representation theory. So, let us actually uh, recall. So, what, what is this uh, SL2 copy for each i? So, for i coming from 1 to n, so we have this SI, so which is the span of xi, hi and yi, where i range from 1 to n. So, this is indeed isomorphic to SL2 C. Okay. So, recall that H i is nothing but E i i minus E i plus 1 i plus 1 and X i is nothing but E i i plus 1 and Y i is nothing but E i plus 1 i. So, these are all the elements. So, they are the Javali generators. So, now uh, we can consider this sub representation of V call it V dash. So, which you take it to be direct sum of V lambda plus m alpha i where m comes from integers. Okay. So, this is indeed uh, SI sub module. So, that is something we have to check. So, if we take, so let us uh, check the following. So, here is a small lemma. 
So, if you take any vector v in v mu and then if you act it by x i on that vector, then the way that vector must lie inside v mu plus alpha i. So, that means if you act x i on v, then the weight of that vector increases by alpha i. Okay, the weight of x i v increases by alpha i. And similar to that, if you apply y i on that vector okay, for any of these vectors, then the y i v indeed actually the weight of that decreases by alpha i. So, the weight of y i v decreases by alpha i. So, that means this is lying inside v mu minus alpha i. So, modulo this lemma it is easy to see that using this. So, this is indeed SL2 sub module. So, SL2 this SL2 copy that we are talking about okay. this is the SI that I am talking about. So, let us verify this. So, this is easy to verify. So, if you take for any uh, H in H and compute what will be the H action on X i V, then you can easily see that. So, you can actually commute this and then you can add the cost which will be given by the bracket H X i acting on V. So, H V is given by lamb mu of V, okay. H V is nothing but mu of H V. So, this is going to give you mu of H X i V plus H X i is 2 X i. So, this is gives you 2 X i V. Okay. Sorry, this is uh, this is H X sorry H X i is nothing but alpha i of H X i. So, because this uh, X i corresponds to the root alpha i okay. X i is indeed inside G alpha i. So, this is going to give you alpha i of H X i v. So, now if you rewrite this, then you can easily see that this is exactly equal to mu plus alpha i of h x i v. Okay. So, that means h acting on s i v is giving you up to the scalar x i v okay. and this is true for all h in h. So, that proves x i v is indeed inside this weight space v mu plus alpha i. Similarly, one can prove that uh, the y i v will be inside v mu minus alpha i. So, that tells you that uh, if you take this uh, v dash which is the direct sum of v lambda plus m alpha i m range from uh, minus infinity to infinity that is integers. So, then that is indeed S L 2 sub module. Okay. So, now look let us look at this module very closely. So, this is the v dash which is the direct sum of v lambda plus m alpha i where m is running over integers. So, lambda is just say some fixed weight inside v. Okay. So, now uh, we are looking at this SL2 copy which is isomorphic to the span of x i h i and y i. So, what are all the h i eigenvalues? h i eigenvalues of this representation v, di, v dash or so you take uh, this weight and apply h i on that. Okay. So, this is just lambda plus alpha i on this h i. So, note that alpha i of h i is 2. Okay. Alpha i of h i is nothing but 2. So, because of that you get exactly equal to lambda of h i plus twice m 2 m. Okay. So, now you can easily see that for various m this lambda of h i plus 2 m they are all distinct. Okay. 
So, there is no repetition of uh, weights here. So, there is no repeat, repetition of Eigen value. So, in particularly if this V lambda m lambda plus m alpha is non-zero, then the corresponding H i Eigen value is given by this lambda of H i plus 2 m. Okay, so, that is that is what we are getting. So, now uh, if you look at what will be S i of lambda that is nothing but lambda minus lambda alpha i alpha i, then look at S i of lambda of H i. So, that is the thing that we are calculating. And then this is nothing but lambda of H i minus lambda alpha i alpha i of H i. Okay. So, this is exactly 2. So, if you do the computation, you can easily see that the lambda alpha i, if you write it in the epsilon i basis and then calculate, this is exactly lambda of h i because alpha i is e equal to epsilon i minus epsilon i plus 1 and h i is being e i i minus e i plus 1 i plus 1 then you can actually easily verify that lambda of h i is going to be equal to the inner product lambda alpha i. So, that tells you that this is exactly equal to minus lambda of h i. Okay. So, s i l s i lambda of h i is nothing but minus lambda of h i. So, which is obtained by taking m to be minus lambda of h i. Okay. So, that means this uh, weight minus lambda h i corresponds to, to the weight lambda minus lambda of h i alpha i which is nothing but S i of lambda. Okay. So, we already know from the SL2 theory if, if k is a weight that is Eigen value of h, then the minus k also must be Eigen value of h. So, there is a symmetric uh, of all the Eigen values of h. So, using that we can immediately conclude that. So, lambda is a weight then that implies okay, this lambda minus lambda of h i alpha i must be a weight. So, indeed we actually proved something more because we already know that. So, if you take this SL2 representation, the V dash k, if you look at the dimension of this, so this is going to be exactly equal to the dimension of V minus k dash, okay, because V k is being the, V k dash is being the kth eigenspace of H i, okay. So, since uh, there is this symmetric of uh, H i eigenspaces and the dimension of this V k dash is same as uh, V dash minus k. So, that actually tells you that the dimension of V lambda which is exactly same as the dimension of V dash lambda of H i which is same as the dimension of V dash minus lambda of H i. So, which is exactly equal to dimension of V of lambda minus lambda of H i S i alpha i. So, this proves that the dimension of V lambda is same as dimension of V S i of lambda. So, now uh, we conclude the general result by observing that these S i actually generates W or S n, S n plus 1. Okay. So, since S n plus 1 is indeed generated by this uh, S size, we can conclude that, we can conclude that the dimension of V lambda is same as dimension of V sigma lambda for all sigma in S n plus 1. Okay. So, this indeed proves uh, we have this S i of weight of V is subset of weight of V and since S i being invertible, you can easily see that 
weight of V being finite set, this SI of weight of V must be same as weight of V. Okay. So, that is why we have this action of S n plus 1 on the set of weights. So, S n plus 1 acts on the set of weights. So, that is very clear and it also preserves the multiplicity. Okay. So, this is uh, somewhat very important observation that we have made using SL2 theory. So, if you are interested in understanding any given finite dimensional representation, so first we observe that uh, we can actually uh, have the action of H on this V. So, that is indeed semi simple and that gives you the weight space decomposition. Once you have the weight space decomposition, then we can ask this natural question what are all the weights that are available and what will be the multiplicities. Okay. So, now we have observed that to understand the weight multiplicities, it is enough to understand uh, the weights modulo this S n plus 1 action, S S S n plus 1 action. So, so that is what we will be actually doing later. So, indeed uh, uh, we are going to prove that the data that we are actually getting it from uh, this weight space decomposition. So, that is the set of weights and its multiplicities that will be sufficient to actually say uh, what is the representation. Okay. So, indeed that data determines the representation. So, what we mean by that? Uh, so, so, to understand that better we need to actually introduce what is called the character theory. So, let us actually define the characters and then it will be it will become clear what I mean by that. So, the characters, so the characters merely actually uh, kind of records the data that I we were discussing about. Okay. So, if you start with the finite dimensional representation of G and we know that the H acts on V semi simply. So, then we can talk about the weight space decomposition. So, you take direct sum V lambda, lambda in H star. So, now what is the character of V with respect to the action of H which is denoted by C H underscore H and V. So, which is, is the formal sum which actually encodes all the data that we are interested in. So, ta basically taking the dimension of V lambda times e power lambda where lambda comes from H star. So, one way to think about it you can actually think this as element inside the, the group ring or group uh, algebra. So, so you take the uh, you take this H star. So, this is indeed abelian group. Okay. So, this is indeed a vector space over C. Okay. So, this is indeed abelian group. If we take this abelian group and then we can talk about the formal sums, finite sums over this abelian group. So, you can talk about the group algebra generated by this H star. So, this is the group algebra generated by H star. So, indeed if you think about it, this group algebra has the basis. So, this is indeed span of, so because we are talking about group algebra over C, so it is the span of let us say E lambda, lambda comes from H star. So, the product here which is the addition of the vectors in H star should be reflected in the algebra. So, so then so, that is actually kind of given by this exponential notation. So, if you take e power lambda, e power mu, so it is the convolution product. So, basically it gives you that e power lambda plus mu. So, basically the addition of the group is recorded here. So, that is comes from the multiplication of the algebra. So, now one can think this character as an element inside this algebra. Okay. 
So now, uh, because this weights being the finite set, this is the finite sum. Even though it looks like infinite sum, this is indeed finite sum. So now, what we are trying to say, if if we know the character of V, then we know V. Okay. So what we mean by that? So here is the theorem, so which we will prove later. Okay. So, V is isomorphic to W as G module if and only if the character of V is same as character of W. So, one way is obvious, okay, this is obvious. So, because if the, if two representations are isomorphic as G modules, then if you look at the set of weights comes from those two representation, they will be identically same and the weight multiplicities will be same. Okay, That is why the character will be same. But for the converse, we need to actually uh, work bit more. So that is because the character is indeed actually possess very little information. So we are using only the action of H that is the carton and then we are saying that uh, so, only the action of H information determines the G action, okay. that is indeed very brave statement to make and uh, we are saying that indeed that is what happening here. Okay. The action of H kind of determines the action of G. Okay. So, in the sense that the action of H immediately tells you what are all the character, if you know the characters are same, then we know the representations are same. Okay. So, we will actually prove this uh, uh, later in couple of uh, lectures. Okay. So, so now once we define the character, then we can immediately ask the following question. Okay. So, there are this natural construction that we have already seen the dual direct sum tensor product and so on. So, if you take <coughs> uh, the direct sum what will happen and so on. So, let us uh, actually see it is indeed a simple exercise. So, if you take the character of V direct sum W then that will be the sum of the character. So, note that uh, we are actually working inside this group algebra. So, it, since it is a C algebra, so we have the addition, multiplication, everything there. Okay. So, what is the addition of the character? Maybe let me just uh, explain here. If you write character of V to be the dimension V lambda, E power lambda, lambda in H star and the character of W to be the summation dimension W mu e power mu. So, maybe we will use the same lambda, lambda and h star. You can easily see that this e power lambda, this form a basis. So, this form a basis for c h star. So, because of that, the addition is just the coordinate wise addition. The character of v plus the character of w is given by the dimension of v lambda plus the dimension of W lambda e power lambda, lambda in H star. Okay. So, now it is easy to see that if you take the direct sum and then look at the lambda space, it is going to be the direct sum of the lambda weight spaces. Okay. This is easy to verify. So, basically this statement is same as this statement. So, now uh, if you look at the dual so, the character of the dual, okay, since the weight of V star, we already know that it is minus of the weight V and the dimension of lambda weight space is same as dimension of the minus lambda weight space of V. So, this tells you that the character of V star has this close relationship with the character of V. So, which is given by character of V star is equal to summation dimension 
v lambda star e power lambda lambda in h star. So, now you just replace this by dimension v minus lambda. Okay, so those things are there and then e power minus of minus lambda. Okay, lambda and fixed. So, now basically what you are doing, so if you take these transformations, okay, from C H star to C H star, which comes from this uh, linear map lambda goes to minus lambda, then that can be extended to e power lambda goes to e power minus lambda. If you use this uh, map, let us call it uh, f, okay, then you can easily see that the character of v star is f of character of v. Okay. So, now if you go to the tensor product, then you can easily see that the character of the tensor product is just the product of the character. Okay. Again, this just follows from the fact that if you take the tensor product and then look at the mu weight space, then that is nothing but the direct sum of the this following individual space v gamma tensor w mu minus gamma, where gamma runs over h star. So, note that this is also same as the direct sum of v gamma dash or mu minus gamma dash tensor w gamma dash, where gamma dash again runs over v star h star. Okay. So, all these things are immediate uh, from the earlier observations. So, one can actually see that okay, as examples, the character of the natural representation is exactly given by e power epsilon 1 plus etcetera plus e power epsilon a. Similarly, the character of the dual representation is given by e power minus epsilon 1 plus etcetera plus e power minus epsilon. And thirdly, if you take the character of the adjoint representation, adjoint representation, so that is given by, so e power 0 is like you can denote it by 1. So, there is no harm in that plus, so you take the summation e power alpha, alpha coming from phi. Okay. So, now it is not hard to see like how to uh, compute like for example, the symmetric powers on the alternatings and so on. Okay. Maybe I leave it as exercise. Uh, compute the character of these symmetric powers sim 2 of C n and then the character of alt 2 C n. Okay. Okay. So, let us actually uh, look at the action of uh, G and then try to understand uh, uh, how it is reflected uh, in terms of the weights. Okay. So, let us take again V being a finite dimensional representation of G and then we fix this uh, direct sum of uh, this V as weight space decomposition. Okay. So, now uh, we have this uh, very special decomposition of G. So, as I already told this is going to play very important role. So, this is called uh, the cotton decomposition or the triangular decomposition. 
So now if you use this triangular decomposition and then see like how uh, this action of this n plus n minus and h acts on v. So, so to understand that first we need to understand how each x i acts on the weight vector. Okay. So, let us make this lemma. So, if for h in h and of course, x i in n plus and let us say v is in v lambda, we have x i v is inside v lambda plus alpha i. So, this is something we already observed and similarly for y i in n minus and v in v lambda we have y i v sits inside v lambda minus alpha i. Now, if you take h i v, so this is going to be inside just uh, the one dimensional space c. So, now uh, take finitely many elements okay, from the weight, from the root spaces. Okay. So, now we will generalize this to finitely many of them. So, now let us use phi for the roots and g alpha for the root spaces. So, now if we take some elements, let us say this is already one dimensional. So, let us denote the generated by x alpha. So, if you take x beta 1, etcetera, x beta n okay, for beta 1, etcetera, beta n comes from phi and then let us say h is comes from h and v is come from v lambda. Okay, then if you compute what will happen to this x beta 1, etcetera, x beta n v. So, that is indeed the weight of that. Okay. So, let us compute and see. So, this is going to be exactly equal to, so one can prove this by induction. So, this can be proved by induction. Okay. So, maybe I will do for n equal to 2 or something. So, if you take this, uh, so since h acts as derivation, this is going to give you exactly x beta 1, etcetera, x beta n. So, you can send all the way to the rightmost corner and then plus. So, it will give you x beta 1 the bracket times x beta 2 and so on x beta n applied on v plus etcetera plus x beta 1 times etcetera x beta n minus 1 h axing on x beta n applied on v. Okay. For example, if we take n equal to 2, so we have x beta 1, x beta 2 applied on v, you are applying h. Then first what you do, you just switch these two elements. Okay. Then you get x beta 1, h, x beta 2 v plus because you have switched this, you have to pay the cost. This is h, x beta 1, x beta 2 v. So, now again you switch these two. So, then see what you get. So, you get x beta 1, x beta 2, x v plus x beta 1, the bracket h x beta 2 applied on v plus x h beta 1, x beta 2 v. Now, you can generalize this using the induction. Okay. Then you will get this formula and this formula tells you that so, this is exactly gives you the weight uh, lambda of h. Okay, this corresponds to lambda of h and this you get beta 1 of h and here you get beta n of h. So, indeed this is exactly equal to lambda plus beta 1 plus etcetera plus beta n of h times this x beta 1 etcetera x beta n applied on v. Okay. So, indeed what we proved, so x beta 1 times etcetera x beta n times v sits inside this weight space v lambda plus beta 1 plus etcetera plus beta n. Okay. This is what we indeed proved. 
So, we will use this later and then uh, try to understand actually uh, how typical element in G acts on capital V using the PBW basis. So, we will do the, the computation in the next class. We will stop here.